Hi everyone, today I'm going to go over an example of polymorphism and then we're going to move from using standard subclasses, so direct parent-child relationships, to abstract classes and then finally to an interfaces so we can see the difference in how they all behave and what they look like when they're actually implemented in code. So what I'm starting with here is just a simple program that has two classes. We have an animal and a dog class. Actually, I need to rename this one. I had it as a more generic mammal, but we want it to be a dog. And then if we go to this dog file, you'll see that it extends animal. And we just have a simple speak method here that's going to print out to the command line what a dog would say. Now, if we look at the animal class, which is the class that it extends from, the class that dog extends from, you can see that we have a speak method here as well, and that animal doesn't extend anything. And what it prints out from the speak method is just, I am an animal, which is well not very informative regarding what type of animal it is. So if we go back to the main, you'll see that I have an animal uh, A, which has been instantiated as an animal, animal B instantiated as a new dog, and a dog being instantiated as a dog. So we can see how all of these different types of instantiations impact the way that the objects actually use the method. So if we go ahead and run this, and I'm going to just move this up here so we can see it, it's going to compile and what we're going to see here is that I am an animal prints out once. So even though animal B here is an animal, uh, the variable itself is an animal, the object it points to is a dog. All right. So that animal is going to behave like a dog because that is what we told it the object was. Now, dog D will behave like a dog as well and it will do what exactly what we think it should do. Now, this is an example of polymorphism where a subclass can behave like its parent. Uh, this is really important. And if we try to cast this B as an animal, I want to see what happens, right? So we want to make sure that we're casting B here as an animal. Will it use its parent's method or its own? right so here it's still using its own method so upcasting it didn't change its behavior that's really important to remember the same thing will happen here with dog if we try to upcast it it's not going to change the behavior because it's still going to act oh i have a misspelling here it helps if i get things correct all right so it uh, it's important to remember that these aren't going to change their behavior just because we decided to upcast it in any particular way. Uh, we still said that this was a subtype of animal called dog, and that's really important in terms of how the object is going to choose to behave. So let's just go ahead and remove that casting since we can see now that that doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't change the behavior. Uh, but we need to take a look at this animal class. Like, why do we even need animal to be a class? Uh, particularly, why do we need it to be a fully instantiatable class? What's what's the purpose here? Uh, it, we're never going to actually have an object that is just an animal and not some subtype of animal. So instead, we should probably create just a simple abstract class. So in order to do that, we're just going to add this word abstract in here. And that's going to be really important. That keyword allows us to create an abstract class in Java. And we're going to be able to use that to make uh, methods that don't have definitions. In other words, just being allowed to make a method uh, that we can later instantiate somewhere else. So in order to do that, we're just going to go ahead and use the speak method some more. And let me find my notes here. Hold on one second. All right, now that I've found my notes here, we're going to just take a look at this. So in order to make this into what we'd call an abstract method, we're going to do 
uh, what we did here. So we added that abstract variable there, or sorry, abstract keyword there. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to add a nice little abstract keyword. And now we don't have to define what speak is or does. We just have that anything that extends this animal class, this abstract class, has to implement this method. So when we go back here, everything here doesn't change. This An abstract uh, class still uses the word extends when we're extending it. So uh, a subclass of the abstract class is still extending it. We don't actually have to change anything in our dog file. So we go back to the main. Now, what's going to happen here? Is this still going to work? Particularly, is animal A equal to new animal still going to work or are we going to get an error? So if we run this, we'll see that that actually gives us an error because animal is an abstract class. It doesn't function anymore in this way. So if we go ahead and just remove that, we'll be able to see that, let it compile, Ooh. helps if I remove all references to that variable, let it compile again. All right, so now we see that we're still getting our barks from our dog and our uh, animal B. And now let's take a look again at this animal class. So are we going to have any variables in here that would be important to its subclasses? Now, uh, we could argue that in the case of an animal, we might. We might have something like a private int age so that we can keep track of the age of an animal. We might have something like the number of legs, number of eyes. But if we don't have anything like that, if we just have some methods, does it really make sense for this to be a abstract class or would it make more sense maybe for it to be an interface? Now remember interfaces can't have uh, variables, they can only have methods and we also can't define any methods. So if there's a method in here that we want to define for all animals, uh, we could do that with an abstract, but we can't do that with an interface. But in this case, we're not doing that. We just have a method that we want to be able to define later in our abstract, in our subclasses, in our child classes that are implementing uh, the behavior from this animal class. So in order to do this, we're just going to change the words here from abstract class to public interface. All right, so now again, we have an interface instead of a class, and we're just going to go ahead and make sure that everything's going to work still in dog. Now, because an interface isn't a class, unlike an abstract class, which is still a class, we can't actually use this extends keyword. Instead, we're going to need to use the implements keyword. All right, that's really important. When we are implementing an interface, we use the keyword implements. And when we are extending a class, we use the keywords extends. So here we're just going to go ahead and go back to the main and we're going to see how this runs now. Now, theoretically, uh, this is all going to run fine. Yeah, so we still got our bark bark here and everything looks good. So keep in mind when you're using abstract classes or interfaces, how it's going to change the behavior and expectations of your inheritance, right? An animal as a interface makes sense if we don't have any variables and if we don't have any methods that we want to explicitly define an animal, but rather want to override every single method in its child classes such as dog. Now it would make sense for animal to be a uh, abstract class if we had variables or methods we wanted to explicitly define here. Uh, on the other hand, this would make sense to be a actual class, not an abstract, not an interface, if we wanted to actually instantiate objects of animal type and not of its child classes, um, or at least not explicitly and only of its child classes. So keep in mind the differences between using a full class, an abstract class, and an interface for uses in inheritance.